Okay, this is the Limpopo September trial exam, September 2021. This is question five, the work energy and power question. This question, spoiler alert, what's going on with this question? It has no mass of the block. It is never ever given in the question. But if you want to try this question on your own before you watch the video, what you must do is set up all your equations. Then you will notice that there is an M for the mass of the box in every single term in the equation. And once you have an M in every single term of the equation, you can divide the whole equation through by M and solve the equation that way. So long as every single term has an M, you can solve it. Okay, so let's go and have a look at what's going on here. It says a block is released from rest at point A. So here is point A. And if it's at rest, its velocity is zero. It slides down a curved frictionless track AB and then moves along a horizontal track BC and then goes up a rough inclined plane CD. So in this thing here, we know that there is going to be friction here and no friction on the other side. So the moment we've got no friction, we know that we can um, use the law of conservation of energy. So now it says to you, the coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the incline CD is 0 0.35. So mu K is going to be 0 0.35. It's very hard to write the K neatly here, but you know that that is mu K. Now it says state in words the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. That is the total mechanical energy, the sum of the gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy in an isolated system remains constant or is conserved. Please learn your definitions properly. This was not underlined, but there's a chance that if you leave this out, you're not supposed to get the marks. Please just practice learning it with the sum of the gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy in it. This word total is also important as well as obviously the isolated system. But if you leave out the word total, you are also wrong with this definition because the total is extremely important because we have to add up the energies. Now it says to you, use the principle of conservation of mechanical energy to calculate the speed of the block at point B. So this is an easy question. The block is going from A to B. Okay, the only tricky thing is you don't have the mass of the box. So if you want to state the law of principle of conservation of mechanical energy, it is that the sum, uh, or well, E mech is the sum. So the E mech at A is equal to the E mech at B. This is a common way to write it. But what exactly is it? It's MGH, the potential energy at A, plus the kinetic energy, a half MV squared at A is equal to the MGH, the potential energy at B, plus the kinetic energy, a half MV squared at B. So that is the statement of the law as an equation. Okay. Now there's no friction. That's how come we're using this law. So we know that at point A, all of the energy is EP and at point B, all of the energy is EK. How do we know that it's all EP here? It's all EP at here because the block was released from rest. So immediately at A, I'm going to say that my kinetic energy is zero. You can write a half MV zero squared, but I'm just writing zero for space reasons. And then we have assumed that this level surface here is my zero reference. Okay, so in terms of my zero reference for this question, it is going to be M, G is 9.8, and my H is 5 meters. Okay, on the other side at point B, the MGH at B is going to be zero. You can write MG zero, but I'm just writing zero for space, plus a half M, and then it says the V squared at B, which is exactly what we are trying to calculate, okay? So if you plug this into your calculator, you will get 49M equals a half MV squared, okay? If you take the half over, you end up with 98M equals MV squared. And at this point, all you do is you say to yourself, there is an M on both sides of the equation. I am going to divide both sides of the equation by M and I'm left with 98 equals V squared. So V is going to be the root 
of 98, which is like 9,89 something, something, and it rounds up to 9,90 meters per second. And so that is the speed of the block at V, and because it says speed, we don't need to give uh, direction. Okay, now the second part of the question is a little bit more tricky. You see it's six marks. It says using energy principles, calculate the maximum height H reached by the block. So it's this height over here. Okay, so now there's a bunch of things going on here that we have to pay attention to. First of all, it wants you to use energy principles. Okay, so what we are going to use is we are going to use W net equals delta EK. Okay, the network done on the block is going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy. So obviously the maximum height reached by the block. What's going to happen is this block comes sliding down here. All its potential energy gets converted to kinetic energy and it's traveling at a speed of 9,9 .9 meters per second when it hits point B. Now there is no friction between B and C so it just keeps going at the same speed. Then it hits point C, okay? And now there is a force acting on the box. Another force has come into play and that is the force of friction. So friction is slowing the box down and then when the block gets all the way up to this maximum height, at this maximum height, its V has gone back to zero, okay? And it'll stop there momentarily and then gravity will take hold and it'll slide back down the slope. So once you've pictured in your mind what the box is doing and where the energy is going, you need to also, because we're dealing with work, work is the force times the distance moved. So what we should do is we also need to bear in mind that when we're using energy principles, we're going to say that the work done by a force is equal to the force times the displacement times the cos of the angle between the force and the displacement, okay? So the work done is F delta X cos theta. So if we've got a force, we now need force diagrams, okay? So if we look at this box, what forces have we got acting on this box? We have got the force of gravity acting downwards. It is on a surface, so we immediately have the normal force. And then we have friction, okay? So the block, the box was going up the slope originally, and then Friction opposes motion, so the force of kinetic friction must be down the slope. So we have three forces here, okay? So we're going to end up with an equation that if we do the W net equals delta EK, we know we have to find the work done by the weight plus the work done by the kinetic friction plus the work done by the normal force, and that is going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy. So for all of these, we have to work out the F delta X cos theta for every force. Now the normal is easy. The normal is at 90 degrees and the cos of 90 is zero. So the work done by the normal is always going to be zero, okay? The change in kinetic energy is also easy. We know that when the block re reaches maximum height here at point D, its velocity will be zero. It will temporarily stop there, okay? So my final delta EK is going to be a half mv squared f minus a half mv squared i, okay? So this is going to be zero minus a half mv i squared. But this a half mv i squared is the same as what it was at B over here. Can you see it B over here? This half mv squared at B is the same as the half mv squared at C, okay? So we could immediately come and write in here minus 49m. So this side of the equation is going to be minus 49m. Now this question takes quite a bit of explaining, okay? So I'm just going to rub out some of the stuff here so that we can have enough space to do other things, okay? But we've got this... 49m equals a half mv squared, which is a very important part of this, okay? So, let us have a look here at what other things we've got going on here. I hope you've all been following what happened here. So, we're going to go back. Let's rub out this half of this. 
let us go back and look at the second half of the box here. Okay, we've worked out the three forces. You're fine with the force diagram. I hope that we've only got three forces acting on the box. Okay, so what we need to also look at here is the fact that where is the box going? Whenever we have a force, we also need to look at how far the force is moving. Because remember, it's F delta X. Now, this delta X is now what we must look at. And the delta X... This is not a good pen. The delta x here, over here, this is going to be the delta x, the distance it moves along the edge of the block. We've not been asked to calculate delta x, though. We've been asked to calculate this h. There's no ways we can get to the, delta, the h without finding delta x. So we're going to find delta x. And then, if you can see here, we have our friend the right angle triangle. Can you see our friend the right angle triangle over here? And with our friend the right angle triangle, if we say sine 30 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, it is going to be equal h is opposite and delta x is the hypotenuse. So h is going to be delta x sine 30. Okay, so that is what we are going to use to figure it out in the end. So let us then figure out everything in terms of delta x. So if we want to figure out stuff in terms of delta x, we have this, we have these other expressions that we need to, to find. Okay, we agreed that we had these three forces. The work done by the weight, the work done by the friction, and the work done by the normal. So the work done by the normal we've sorted out. Let us look at the work done by the weight. Okay, so if we look at the work done by the weight, it's going to be the force times the displacement times cos theta. Okay, so now what is the force of the weight? It is Fg equals mg. So I'm going to substitute here an m for the mass, which we don't know, a 9,8 for the g, a delta x, and now we need to work out the cos of the angle. Now this cos theta, remember in the f delta x cos theta, the cos theta is the angle between where the force is acting and where the displacement is. So if we look at the weight, the weight is acting downwards here, okay? So can you see the weight is acting downwards here? Where is the box going? The box is going up the slope, yeah? This is the direction of motion. So by the powers invested you by geometry, you know that this is 30, which means in a right angle triangle, this is 60. So if I swing the force of the weight into the direction of motion, what is the angle between this force which acts downwards and the direction of motion? Can you see there's a straight line here? So this angle is going to be 120 degrees. The weight must turn through 120 degrees to be displacing in the direction of motion. So we are going to go here, M 9.8 delta X cos 120, okay? That is what we're going to do with the weight. Now, what are the other forces that we've got here? We've agreed that the normal is um, at 90 degrees to the direction of motion. This is the direction of motion. So now we need to look at friction, okay? So we're going to do the same thing with friction. What is the work done by the friction? It's going to be the force of friction times delta x times cos 180, okay? So the force of friction, delta x, cos 180, because friction always opposes motion, so there's always 180 degrees between the force of friction and the direction of motion. Okay, so let's go and have a look here. What do we need to know about the force of friction? Well, to find the force of friction, they have given us this coefficient of kinetic friction. So we know that the force of kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. So we can easily substitute from the question 0 0.35 
and now we need the normal force. So the normal force is going to be mg cos theta. So this is going to be 0, 0,35 times 9.8 times m times the cos of 30 because this is the cos of 30 over here. Okay, so the normal, remember that the normal is the same as Fg perpendicular if there isn't another force acting. So I've just substituted Fg perpendicular into here. So I get 0, 0,35, the coefficient of kinetic friction, mg, 9.8m, times the cos of 30, which is the angle of the slope. So if I come back here, I have to put in here the force of kinetic friction. I'm putting in the force of kinetic friction now. 0, 0,35 times 9.8 times m times the cos of 30. Okay, so now that is all the force of of a kinetic friction, then I'm going to put the displacement delta x, and then I'm putting the angle between the force and the direction of motion, so that is cos 180. Okay, so we have now got this very large expression over here, and this very large expression over here for the two terms for the work done. Okay, so we come back here to our equation and we have to substitute these in, the work done by the weight and the work done by the uh, frictional force. So if you have a look here, the cos of 120 is in actual fact a half, okay? So this term here is going to simplify out to something like minus 4,9 delta x. Okay, well it's actually the cos of 120 is like minus a half, not a half. Okay, don't forget the sign. The sign is important. So the work done by the weight is going to be minus 4,9 delta x. This work done by the frictional force is not as easy to simplify and you shouldn't simplify it too soon and it's because of this cos 30 is not, uh, uh, it's got a root number in it. But either way, if you plug all of this into your calculator and show all of these substitutions, please, before you plug it into your calculator, the, the marker is going to be looking for, did I substitute the coefficient of kinetic friction? Did I substitute gravity? Did I substitute the mass? Did I substitute the angle between um, the, the direction of motion and everything? But if you put this all into your calculator, you get something like, minus 2,9705 delta x. Now, what have I forgotten here? Both of these are also multiplied by m, okay? And you can see on the other side of my equation, I also have this minus 49m. So if I put these two in here, minus 2,9705 delta x plus zero, this one's got an M in it, this one's got an M in it, and this one's got an M in it. I'm going to now cancel through all of these M's, okay? So I'm going to rub them out because messy, okay? We have now got rid of all of the M's. So you then end up with minus 7,8705 delta X equals minus 49. Remember this, minus 49 is from the kinetic energy calculation from the previous calculation. So then you end up with delta x equals 6,2258 meters. Please don't round this. Don't round anything, which is why I said to keep this cos 30 as cos 30 as long as possible. But now we found the delta x, which was this distance that the block moved along here. Okay. So now we're going to come back to this delta x sine 30 equals h. So it's 6,2258 times the sine of 30, which is a half, is going to equal h. So my height here is going to be 3,11 meters if we round it off to two decimal places. And therefore, you should answer the question as the max height reached by the block is 3,11 meters. Okay, so that took a very long time to get there, but I hope you can see that you just have to use step-by-step -step logic and eventually you will get to the correct answer.